that men might feel they're going to get picked on, like if it's in relationship counselling, for example. Um, so yeah, they might think they're going to get ganged up on in the session. I think because uh, women go to therapy more often, um, sometimes men can think about therapy in a way that's a little bit unrealistic. They think that therapy has to be about talking about your emotions and you have to you know, talk about your childhood or sort of open up about your emotional side. And while well, you can do that if you go to therapy, um, sometimes therapy can be about uh, just setting more goals and getting more organized. And it can really just be whatever you need to help you. So I think um, yeah, the immediate answer that comes to, to, to light is that um, going to therapy might be perceived as uh, being soft, it's not manly, it doesn't sort of accord with uh, some typical male stereotypes. Um, but on the other side of the coin, it might be that uh, men are frightened of being perhaps more vulnerable, uh, of opening up to their emotions. Uh, so potentially they can bottle stuff up and that's living inside them. It might be uh, potentially dictating um, how they act and how they think. And um, uh, so, you know, we, we hopefully live in a more enlightened age these days. Um, and I think historically men have perhaps been not that good at opening up about any issues that they might have from a health perspective, whether it be physical or mental. Um, and indirectly peer group pressure might have some influences in relation to that, which um, isn't necessarily a healthy thing at all. You tend to think all I ever do is ask people about how they feel. Um, and it's a much more pragmatic um, approach as far as I'm concerned. Um, and that, of course, then there's the um, concern that somehow I'm crazy or that I will have to talk about things that are um, seriously threatening to me and I'll have to expose myself in some way that's scary. And so I'll better off to avoid, don't go. I think there's some big scary truth that, that you know will come out, out in therapy that could be hard to handle. And my experience is, you know, that that's not the case, but, and that that's, that fear itself is, you know, doesn't turn out to be a reality. Often people, yeah, sometimes there are things that are hard, you know, to talk about in therapy. Sometimes there can be painful feelings that can be, you know, experienced in therapy, but. I think they can be soothed in therapy as well. They can be experienced in a, in a safe environment. Yes, I think that so much of our lives is about the psychology of people and that um, we focus lots on things and success, but the enjoyment of life is very much about good relationships with people and that in terms of success even, um, the having the IQ is important, but having the EQ is even is equally important. And that if, you've, um, if you're in good shape psychologically, then you do so much better in relationships, you do so much better at work. I think the opportunity to perhaps improve themselves, um, but then also what my experience has been as well is that um, your total body health can be influenced by mental health and, and likewise your mental health can be influenced by your physical health and so the the interactiveness of that um, I think is something that can provide a lot of uh, a lot of uplift or a lot of um, improvement to one's total sense of well-being and total sense of health. So that's probably the opportunity that people might be missing out on. Yeah, I think sometimes people might feel like, um, you know, they're not going to benefit or, you know, it's only for some people or, or only for women, etc. things like that. But I think it can be really helpful and sometimes it can, you know, it doesn't have to be all, I suppose, very sensitive or emotional focus can really be dictated to what, um, person resonates with so I think that's something that um, people can definitely benefit from and just being open to it and giving it a go for sure. We can provide like a safe kind of environment whether it's individual counselling or couples counselling um, where they might feel a bit more confident to open up about their emotions or talk about things that they be afraid to talk about in other contexts so they might be missing out on a chance to talk about difficult things. Well, 
getting better. They're missing out on getting better. Traditionally, men are great deniers. Um, traditionally, men will say, oh no, I don't need to go to the doctor. I don't need to go to the psychologist. I don't need to go to the physio. She'll be right. She'll be right, mate. But you, you know what? Usually they're not. It's not right. And, um, and so if they did go, their life would be a lot easier because they'd have less pain or less hassle or less stress or know how to cope with things a lot better. People being more okay with mentioning things, uh, I think there's less stigma, which is good, and um, people are being more um, courageous about um, admitting when they, you know, they've got a problem or when things are tough, and I think that is kind of a big step forward. I think there has been a much greater focus on mental health issues in, and probably promoted by the COVID-19 virus issue where people have struggled a lot. Uh, and there's been much more focus on people uh, seeking assistance for um, depression, for anxiety and, and, and an acceptance um, more than there has been in the past from men. But men are much less likely to, to seek assistance than women are usually. I think through COVID, perhaps that's broken down some of the uh, stereotypes that people otherwise may have had about men's mental health in particular. And then also the ability and the accessibility of that may have also opened up during COVID. But I, I think as a society, perhaps we're just becoming a little bit more accommodating and understanding of all areas of mental health, not just men's, but also women's mental health and, and the opportunities that might be there that people can access to, to try and improve themselves. Men are feeling allowed to be vulnerable more and to be in touch with their feelings and to explore all kinds of different sides of their personalities and their own diversity, you know, in, in, in society. and, and those things are good, you know, that they're allowed to, there are different, lots of different ways of being a man that, that are probably, you know, more acceptable. And I think that is having an effect on things like suicide rates compared to last century, which have sort of improved over the course of last century and, you know, kept improving, even though it is still a big problem, especially for men. I think those things are helping. And, you know, I suppose the things that are difficult that we as men you know, probably find it harder to do, like be in touch with our feelings, have, um, and especially in relationships, share our vulnerability in relationships. I think while they're a problem, we probably are getting better at, at doing those things. I would hope that I'm still learning, still you know, interested in the world, exploring the world, enjoying nature, enjoying, you know, connections with family and friends. I think just um, practicing good self-care, still exercising and things like that, doing fun things and um, just still being good to myself and, and keeping a, a good balance between work and fun. Uh, one of the things that I have enjoyed doing and has been seriously important for me, I think, in terms of stress, mental health issues myself, is I've been running uh, up to the point of now 16 marathons and riding a bike. Probably in 20 years I won't be uh, running, but I may still be capable of riding a bike. And the fitness issues, I think, are really important to me. Um, it looks after me physically, it looks after me um, emotionally. Well, still being alive, but hopefully um, spending quality time with my family and my daughter. I think my 20 year old self is probably only one thing that I'd tell him at that, and that's to be smarter with money. <laughs> tell him to use more sunscreen and um, take better care of himself. I'd like to give my, my 20 year old self maybe experiences that help would help him to maybe not not be as restricted by anxiety and ex in making certain and, and going out and seeking certain experiences that he was yeah maybe restricted. Um, 
I'm not sure that I can remember what my 20 year old self was like. Um, it's a, it's a fair way back, but what I would say is to have faith in life and to have uh, faith in yourself and um, you'll work it out along the way. Uh, one thing that still frustrates me is that people with that much money, it can still be really hard for them to access psychology, especially in sort of regional areas or in the other suburbs. So I think having some special additional funding for people either unemployed or on low income to access mental health services, I would love it if that happened. So if I was king, I would um, eliminate evil. Um, I, um, I'm a person of uh, peace. Um, and uh, I'd like to think that we can uh, collaborate uh, and live, uh, appreciate other people, other others' attitudes and beliefs, but um, uh, accommodate those, um, to learn from other people, and not to be so self-judging. And going to be king of the world for the day. The one thing that I would do for people is give them a sense of self-confidence and self-esteem. Separate from arrogance, but, but a sense of confidence is what enables people to do things, to be able to achieve things in their lives um, and to be happier. I had a little bit more than a day or I had a lot of power in that day. <laughs> it was pretty powerful king. Then, you know, apart from climate change and action and things like that, maybe I would, you know, in terms of mental health, wish for and instigate as king. Um, you know, kind of a, a fair, equitable mental health system that is flexible and adaptable to different people's needs, that provides sufficient support and, you know, individualised support in an inter interdisciplinary way for the people who need it. Going back to my other point about making people kind, <laughs> that would be one thing. But no, I think, you know what? I think I would get rid of borders. If we didn't have any borders, we wouldn't have any walls, possibly. Although, you know, people being people, they might find a way to create walls from nothing. But a lot of times, borders and differences we make amongst ourselves um, become a big deal, and people go to war and fight over these things. So, if I was king for a day, hmm, that's what I might do.